everyone. This is Jeff Barney from Saxba General Store and today he is demonstrating how to pan sear fresh caught red grouper. Well, first of all, I keep on my stovetop, near my stovetop, kosher salt. I like Morton's because it's flaked and makes a nice little crust without dissolving into the flesh. And coarse cracked black pepper. And then I have a little bit of um, favorite product of mine you'll see in the store pretty soon. Dr. Tom Cowan's uh, pepper salt. He's got all sorts of lovely items and you'll see soon what those are. So first we start with an extremely hot pan. Um, this is my favorite. Uh, you can use an iron skillet, a, a uh, carbon steel pan, a stainless steel pan, not quite as good. This is a copper bottom French pan. I've had it for a long time. I haven't named her yet, but she's one of my favorites. Starting with extremely high flash point fat. It could be tallow, it could be coconut oil, it could be pork fat, otherwise known as lard. This is duck fat, a favorite of ours at the store. And the reason for that is that it maintains its integrity at super high heats. So you can see, I'm going to have to turn this fan on just a little bit. The pan is smoking. I have the grouper cut into four to six ounce fillets. That's optimal for big eaters, eight ounces, but I don't recommend it. I'm gonna give a good crust of kosher salt and coarse ground pepper and my secret pepper salt. In the pan, lay it gently. I would say there was about a tablespoon. Now it's searing. I'm gonna go ahead and do a few fillets because you want the surface area to be relatively covered, not too much exposed. Otherwise, the bits in the pan get burnt, and that influences very poorly the rest of the dish. I have tongs, always have tongs, and I have a towel always handy because the handle will get hot, which you want if your pan is properly hot. So, what I was listening for when I put the fish in the pan is for the pan to what I call sing. It should be sizzling right away. Uh, if it doesn't, if you lay it, if you start to lay it down, it doesn't um, respond in that way. Pull it off, it's okay, but wait. The key is to see your high flash point fat smoking. You don't want olive oil to smoke. For one thing, it turned rancid, and the other thing, as uh, my late mother-in-law found out, it'll catch on fire. All right, see that? So now, I've gotten to a point where, at first, the fish would stick, but it seared to the point where it released, and when it's moving about like that, I know it's about ready to turn. And I can look at it, because it's going to be firm flesh enough, it's not going to fall apart. And it's getting there, golden brown. I want to caramelize the outside, which tracks the sugar to the surface. That's why they call it caramelizing. Locking in the, the moisture and the flavor into the center of the fish. I might, at this point, if I need to, add just a little bit of fat. If, it's, if, the, if the protein has absorbed the fat, like if it's uh, a particularly lean fish, like grouper. Salmon, on the other hand, will render out a, a, a good amount of fat. So you wouldn't have to do that, but it's okay to do that as long as you don't cool the pan down. Okay, so we're getting there. You turn it over gently, and I'll tilt the pan so you can see it. Doing a little bit of a jiggle there. Oh, yes, that's exactly what we want. You see right there? See how golden brown that is? Mmm, delicious. And again, this, this uh, group is a little bit slight on the interstitial fat, so it's not rendering fat out itself, so I'll add a little bit of fat. I don't want to fry it, so I don't want it swimming in fat. I want to maintain the integrity of the texture of the outside of the fish, and if I if I have too much fat in, it's hard to, to correct that, so it's better to add a little bit at a time, and that's what I've done. Now, I have an oven heated at 350. These are quite thick fillets, and I could finish them on the stove top, and that's one way to do it, is just to let it go at a lower temperature. But it will start to sweat a little bit. It'll lose the integrity of the structure of the fish that I'm looking for, which is a, that crisp 
exterior and a moist interior. I'm looking for this, a, an equal sear on both sides. So right now it looks like I showed you. And so I'm gonna run this into the oven, really just for a, a minute. So some other kinds of fish, like I mentioned salmon, that have a lot of, of internal fat, in, called interstitial fat, they will continue to cook on the stovetop, where this will cool down much faster. As you saw, it didn't render the fat, and so that was an indicator of that. I've put it in the oven for uh, about two minutes now, and I'm going to pull it out. That's a 350 on a, on a convection oven, and what I'm looking for texture-wise is for grouper, particularly, to start to flake. Now. This grouper is just at the point of being, I would say, rare on the inside. And I could let that go and let that rest. But what I'm going to do is take one more step. It's holding together nicely. There we go. This one fell apart a little bit, you can see, so that's a little bit thinner piece and it's probably more on the verge of being done, but you really want to flirt with it not being done, sort of towards rare, because the last step, this is the thing that turns a really good dish into something a little bit more extraordinary. Anybody can do at home and come off as fancy. Where's the butter? Butter. Wine. Could be rosé. Could be white. This relates to fish. Could be a light red like Pinot Noir. And we're going to do what is a, a very simple pan sauce that changes everything. So you want it when it's hot. I let it cool a little bit so I didn't catch on fire, but catching on fire is good because you want your alcohol to cook off. I'm not going to cause it to flame up, but I could. I'm going to let it cook a little bit, and I'm going to put about a tablespoon of butter, and I'm going to bring the bits off the bottom because that's going to be part of the sauce. And hey, if your, your fish falls apart a little bit, leave it right in there. Uh, this is a good part of the sauce. You can chop up a little bit of garlic, some shallots, or that sort of thing to put in here, but just for simplicity's sake, we're going to make a little pan sauce. Okay, so the alcohol has pulled off the caramelized bits from the bottom that has adhered from this gorgeous caramelized brown grouper, and we're going for a sort of a gravy or a syrupy I, I like to say that when it gets to the place where it has millions of bubbles it, that are gathered together very closely, you have the sauce that you want, you want it to thicken, and I just stay with it. You can also, once you've got the bits off, you can move it about like that, and again, you can vary this at this point. You could add some tomato to it. If you want a little freshness, a little fresh basil, a little herb, that sort of thing. If that's what you're looking for. Looking for the sauce to start to slightly adhere to the pan. And then on it goes. This is, see, this is a kind of rosé. This would be good served over rice or risotto. We're doing a little bit of crispy duck fat potatoes. And that's perfection.